Hello. Today I'd like to compare China with India uh, in connection with a comparison between uh, state capitalism and market capitalism. Uh, first, in terms of uh, GDP, the size of the economy, uh, China, as a representative of uh, state capitalism, has a very large GDP compared to uh, that in India, that's a kind of representative of a market economy, market capitalism. China's GDP is uh, $9,469,000,000,000 whereas the data in India is only about one-fifth of that size, that is one trillion eight hundred seventy-six billion dollars. Uh, these are nominal numbers, but if you divide those numbers by you know, the respective uh, price levels in those two countries, you have these numbers, 16 trillion 149 billion dollars in China, that's about the same as that in the United States in real terms. So by now, this is the 2013 figure, so by now, China has surpassed the United States uh, in uh, total GDP in real terms, as we all know. Whereas India's real GDP is uh, 6 trillion 776 dollars, that's a little less than half certainly more than one-third of that in China. So in India, uh, this difference is huge, nominal and real, because of the very low price levels in India compared to the uh, difference in China, or certainly that in the United States. Uh, since the uh, China and India have almost the same uh, size of population, uh, if you divide these numbers by the number of people, you have the you know, similar relationship among the per capita uh, numbers like this. Here is the per capita GDP in China. Uh, that's $6,959. That's about $7,000 per person per year in China. Whereas in India, that's only $1,500. So again, that's about one-fourth to one-fifth. Of the level. Uh, but in the PPP terms, China uh, has uh, 11,868 uh, 11, dollars per year per person, whereas in India uh, that's a uh, little less than half, uh, 5,450 dollars. So this is the current situation as of 2013. Uh, one of the questions is uh, how fast each economy has been uh, growing to this level. And as, you know, as we know, China has been growing at a phenomenal rate uh, faster than any other country, certainly uh, than uh, India. And these are numbers for the last uh, 9 to 10 years. Uh, as you can see, from 2006 to uh, 2014, for these nine years, uh, China has been maintaining very high growth rate, almost double digit every year, uh, as you can see. The, one of the remarkable aspects of Chinese economy is that right after the Lehman shock, you know, during the Great Recession period, China uh, was able to maintain its 9% level growth rate because of the uh, massive investment in the inland area, in rural area, of course, led by the uh, government, state-owned uh, enterprises in the inland provinces to generate more you know, income inland to offset the uh, uh, huge losses in the uh, coastal provinces due to uh, the recession. Uh, whereas in India, there's no such massive program, therefore, China, India's growth rate declined uh, sharply uh, in 2008 compared to the previous year. Uh, 
as was the case in many other countries. But both countries recovered by 2010, so the, this year, 2010, uh, India and China both registered very high growth, the, uh, more than 10%. And, and then uh, both countries experienced uh, the slowdown or the decline in growth rates. Um, however, it looks like the nature of the decline may be different between China and India. In India, uh, this decline seems to be a little bit of cyclical or change because the, this uh, decline hit the bottom around 2012 and then it's gradually coming back from 4.7%, 5%, 5.5%, and this year, 2015, it's going to be higher than 6%, and next year it's going to surpass 70% or so, or as many people are predicting. Whereas in China, it's a more, it looks like a more uh, long-term decline, 9.3, 7.7, 7.7, and then 7.4, and the uh, 2015, uh, this year, it's going to be around 7% or even less. The next year, it's going to certainly less than 7%. And therefore, there will be a reversal in the uh, growth rates between China and India, as some people are predicting. Now, look, let's look at the background for these uh, movements. First, in the past, why uh, was the growth rate in China higher than in India? And the number of reasons, one of the possible causes or the reasons may be a very rapid shift in population or workforce from agricultural sector to uh, the manufacturing sector in China compared to India. So now China is, uh, has become a major industrial nation, manufacturing country, whereas in India it's still a majority of uh, workforce are in the agriculture and the majority of products are still agricultural. Uh, and behind that movement, uh, there's a very high investment and savings in the manufacturing sector, you know, introducing a lot of foreign capital and also uh, very high savings uh, to finance the domestic investment through uh, state-owned you know, companies in many cases to generate to the, you know, the exports and then the, so there's a, a sort of virtual circle uh, to stimulate the industrial production in China, but some say it was uh, just overinvestment and too much investment and less uh, consumption. Therefore, right now China is experiencing a slowdown because of difficulties in reforming the economy further towards the uh, more normal level investment and more consumption-led economy uh, for normalization in long term. Whereas in India, since the growth rate has been very modest, it's easier to shift uh, towards the advanced state of the economy. Therefore, India will surpass China uh, in terms of the growth performance uh, in the near future. And in a very long run, we know that the, uh, China will, will have difficulty maintaining a uh, uh, workforce because of declining and also aging population, but India uh, doesn't seem to have such a problem. So in the long run, uh, more and more people are optimistic about uh, India, whereas the, uh, more and more people become pessimistic about China. And how uh, 
market capitalism and state capitalism will play out in relation to those uh, you know, kind of uh, outlook uh, remains to be seen.